So, good afternoon, everyone. For the next 20 minutes, we'll be talking about our strategy for a new dimension, which we term sustainable dimensions. This is a unique strategy that we are very excited to present to all of you. My name is Jacob, and with me from Copenhagen today, I have my partners, Christopher, Henriette, and Alexander, and we are very excited to be here. So to begin with, we think that it's very important that we look at the current situation and complication of uh, nano dimensions. We see that since the company was incepted four years ago, the company has been able to provide a turnkey solution for the PCB uh, prototyping market. However, the company is now in a situation where it needs to find out how to disrupt other industries over the coming years in terms of disruption. And this is very much a question of where to play and how to play. So we have analyzed this question for the past 48 hours. And the strategy that we are proposing to you today is three-pronged. The first step that we are looking at is very much focusing on the ink. This is where you have the strongest capabilities within chemical engineering. We want you to use the ink in order to enter the prototyping uh, market for 3D printing for solar cells. We see that there is a key player in, uh, in Israel called Ultilite that is active within this market and we want you to partner with them. However, in order to commercialize sales, we need you to engage leading distributors such as EOS and Wilsey because this will enable you to build uh, sales quickly. We see that over a three to four uh, year period, we will be able to generate 12.8 uh, million in, uh, in revenue US. And now we are excited to go into this strategy. So taking a step back and looking at what is it actually that new uh, dimension is so good at doing. We see that there are three uh, key steps. Over the, uh, over the past couple of years, you have built really strong capabilities within your chemical engineering. You are good at partnering with other companies and you have a global mindset. And this is very much enforced in your global vision. You want to become global as fast as possible. This has now resulted in key, uh, in key production within ink, printers, and software. And by all of this, you now have a very strong value, uh, value proposition to your customers emphasized in the value chain. If we go further and we look at, so what is it actually that customers in the PCP uh, prototyping market is looking at currently and what are, what are their needs? They are very much looking at protection of their IP, bringing their products quick to market uh, and being able to do fast prototyping. And this is the exact value proposition that your company comes with today. But you can do so much more. And this is what we want to elaborate to you on now, explaining uh, the key trends that we see in the market. All right, can you hear me? So uh, this is the, I'm here to present the key trends and uh, what we have found is that um, the increasing demand for pro or the time to market is, has become a uh, competitive advantage for most companies and especially within the technol technological sphere. We see it's ever increasing and by that it also means that IP protection becomes ever more uh, important. Uh, but it's very difficult to uh, source prototyping uh, outside the company to protect, uh, so as to lose control of the IP. Additionally, we see that components are becoming smaller and smaller while sophistication is increasing. So there's a high demand for the 3D printing technology now. When companies are actually adopting 3D uh, printing, it's not so much as for mass production as it is for product development. This is really the area where this technology really takes off. Uh, and an example by this is uh, from a case uh, of Johnson & Johnson who adopted 3D printing and increased their time, uh, their product frequency or prototyping frequency by 66% just by adopting the technology. So this is really, really interesting for prototyping. So. So in order just uh, to consider um, the, the question and what we're trying to solve, we looked into it uh, two ways. So there's the existing business, which in the case uh, was uh, not in scope uh, as it was formulated. 
uh, and we also saw that, there, that na uh, nano dimensions were on track with several of their milestones actually hitting them uh, historically and has received very good feedback on the beta testings already. Additionally, we also see that there are several thousand inquiries already in place and there seems to be some market uh, for this technology. Looking into uh, the new markets uh, and the new industries, there are two ways to go about it, two alternatives, so to say. There's the market development and there is a the diversification. Here the critical questions is to answer, uh, or to answer is where does nano dimension have uh, any synergies with the existing products that they already have? And the other uh, question is that which new markets uh, and, new, and products provide the best opportunity for uh, nano dimensions? Looking into the market size of the 3D printing prototype market within electronics, we, actually, we, see, we see the nine most uh, or largest markets within this, and we've tried to map both their market size and their growth potentials over the next years. What we find is that automotive sensors, automotive seat heaters, and solar panels are actually, uh, seems at the first glance to be the most interesting markets to look further into. And this is what we have done, but uh, in order to do so, we, had, we needed to outline some criteria uh, to evaluate whether or not uh, the market could be feasible. Here, for example, as Jacob mentioned before, we, had, we took the value proposition, took it as drivers to make sure that there is an actual demand for our product. Uh, so that, it, that requires it to be a need for fast time to market. It requires uh, an importance of protecting the IP. Uh, the products also need to be very sophisticated, um, otherwise you wouldn't uh, engage in, uh, in, uh, in very high technological 3D printing. Um, and the components need to be multi-layer, because you can do it with one layer, two layers perhaps, without 3D printing, but when it becomes multi-layer, that's actually where it really becomes a competitive advantage. On top of this, we also saw what would happen if they adopted prototyping uh, with 3G printing, what kind of benefits would they enjoy? So we took a report from ENY that highlighted the potential uh, time benefits that they would receive if they adopted 3D printing. Lastly, we took uh, variables or the variable size of the components to make sure that they can actually fit in the printer and you don't have to make multiple printer if the component increases. And, uh, and, and uh, probably the most important, are there any synergies with the current R&D pipeline that Nano Dimension has? Because we don't want to change that. We don't want to change R&D and very uh, expensive R&D uh, just because uh, somebody uh, says there's a new market that they should pursue. So we try to really, really tap into what is already going on. And we found that, that uh, the solar panel market for 3D prototyping is, uh, is extremely interesting. So that's our alternative one. Looking into alternative two, to look into other markets than the electronics market. And this is here, this is, we are not talking about prototyping, here we are talking about 3D printing. Aerospace motor engines and prosthetics, specifically uh, minimal prosthetic, uh, prosthetics, uh, are extremely interesting as well. But this doesn't mean that we should uh, consider all three. Uh, rather, they would also require some sort of uh, um, say, uh, sorting in terms of these criteria that we have set up. What we found is that prosthetics seems to be the most interesting in terms of synergies, uh, sorry, complexities, uh, and the value proposition that Nano Dimension uh, brings to the market. So we have these two alternatives, and uh, we can't go with both, so we need to choose. <laughs> and um, to do so, we have set up even more criteria. Um, where we find that solar panels actually over or uh, outperform prosthetics on both the disruptive potential, it outperforms on, um, on the match with the existing pipeline and the capability fit, and also on the revenue potential that we see uh, going into this. So we are actually, uh, we think that nano dimension should go with solar panels, but we do also have a more elaborate plan on the prosthetics just to see the impact, what it would have cost if we went with that. So now I have told you how, uh, sorry, why uh, solar panels for 3D printing, uh, prototype printing is the most interesting. 
Now Henriette, my partner here, will talk about how. Thank you, Christopher. So let's go into our strategy, uh, sustainable dimensions. So our strategy, sustainable dimensions, focuses on your core competency, and that is the silver nanoparticle ink. So we want you to leverage that. The second step is about establishing a partnership to enter the solar market because you're not there yet. And here we want you to enter with Utilite, another Israeli company. Um, and to ensure that this becomes a success, we also want you to establish a global sales presence by um, um, uh, cooperating with these two distributors. So, so talking about the first step of the strategy, and that is really where, where is your competitive advantage? We wanted to look at the three main components of your business in relation to the um, solar cell uh, market. And what we found is that your printer at the moment is of course not configured to print solar panels or prototypes of solar panels. So it would require some large R&D efforts to shift the entire business to go straight for solar panels. Um, the software at the moment could be configured to, uh, to uh, producing solar panels, but that's really not where, where you have the edge. And that, of course, leaves us with the thing in the middle, right? And that is the conductive ink. So what is really, really interesting about this conductive ink is that it's used in solar panels and in the prototyping of solar panels. And your product is um, superior to other inks that are currently used in the solar panel market. Furthermore, the ink provides, um, at the moment, as, as was just presented to us, they're working on the possibility of flexibility. So that is also what's happening in the solar panel market. We're working towards the flexibility of solar panels. Imagine that our clothes someday will actually be made up of solar panels. So, so there's a joint vision uh, between these two. And last but not least, the ink is also really interesting because the business model is built upon recurring revenue. So we don't just go out and sell a printer, but we actually keep on getting recurring revenue from the ink. So that was the first step. So let's look into the second step, and that is about how do we enter the market. We want you to establish a partnership with Utilite. We looked at a different number of partners to figure out who or who would be the best fit. And what we found uh, very clearly is that Utilite would be the best fit. So at the moment, uh, just to explain Utilite, they um, are producing 3D printers for uh, solar panels. So they have... They have the, the printing part and they have the software for uh, producing solar panels. But right now they are using a, an ink that is not as um, competitive as, uh, as uh, nano dimensions. And this is very interesting because in the solar panel market, we're seeing that there's high competition and that people, uh, that the companies want to print uh, prototypes to keep on being the best company. Furthermore, what we see with Utilite is it that it's an Israeli company. So this also means that it's a great organizational and cultural fit for the partnership. So together, what can these two companies bring to the table for the solar panel uh, um, companies? So as, as I just mentioned, in, in solar panels at the moment, there's high competition. And it's all about who can innovate and who can make the most efficient solar cells. So there's a lot and a lot of prototyping. Prototyping, prototyping, prototyping. And this, of course, um, enables that... 3D printing can come into the picture. So at the moment, Utilite can mass produce uh, or has a 3D printer for mass production. And um, Nano Dimension has the ink that enables prototyping. So together, they can really um, relieve the pain points that the solar panel customers are experiencing at the moment. And let's go into the last part of our strategy, which Alexander will take you through. Now, to successfully commercialize uh, this strategy, the company needs to build a global sales presence. And uh, currently, neither Nano Dimension nor uh, Utilize uh, have really the capabilities to go and sell this product, and also they do not have really a sales organization to do it. Meanwhile, you can see that Nano Dimension and Utilite, they're both located here in Israel. Uh, Utilite, they have a production facility in China, and also uh, Nano Dimension, they have a, a distributor in the US and one in the UK, but those two are considered uh, uh, non-viable for selling this product as it's a completely different product they're selling. Also, you can see from the blue colors uh, on the map 
that the largest concentrations of manufacturers of uh, solar cells are located in the US, Germany and uh, China. And so in order to establish this sales presence, we propose that uh, Nano Dimension, they, they partner up with Wynet in the US and EOS in, uh, in Germany. EOS can also cover Europe uh, and also has a great presence in, uh, in China. So they can also serve the, the Chinese and the Indian markets. Um, and also Wynet and EOS, they are, the, they are among the top five uh, distributors of uh, uh, 3D printers for the mass production of, uh, of uh, solar cells. And lastly, uh, before commercializing uh, the strategy, we believe it's important to sort of build up a, a demand for, for the product. And so we uh, propose going to three trade fairs. Um, yeah. So that brings us to the implementation plan, which has three steps. In the first step, the company uh, makes the initial contact with Utilite uh, and actually establish uh, the partnership. In the second phase, they uh, design, build, and test uh, the uh, 3D printer system together with Utilite, uh, while also building the sales presence and um, going to the trade fairs in order to commercialize the strategy in uh, step three in mid 2018. And so this strategy has three significant risks. The first one is that the sales setup is not able to actually market the product. Uh, the second one is that the sales setup is not able to service the product and also not able to, uh, to support uh, customers. Uh, and the last one is that new ink technologies will actually make silver obsolete. And in order to mitigate the, the, the first or the most significant risk, uh, we believe they should look into uh, partnering up with other uh, distributors than Wynet and, and EOS. And they already uh, sort of mitigate that uh, by going to the trade fairs and building up uh, contacts with other distributors. Uh, also, they should look into using distributors who do not currently uh, uh, distribute uh, 3D printers for, for solar cells. And lastly, they should look into whether it makes sense to actually build a global sales organization because there may be synergies uh, with the current PCB business, but also future uh, application areas. So in order to sort of finance the, uh, the, the strategy, uh, the company must uh, go and, and, and get 1.2 US million US dollars. And they should do that through bank financing because they've already just made a seasoned offering and also they have a very low debt. And this uh, means that they are able to generate a revenue of 12.8 million US dollars in uh, year five, uh, which translates into an EBITDA of 3.2 million US dollars. Um, and if you look at the uh, accumulated discounted cash flow timings, um, first of all, you can see that in all scenarios, they'll be able to generate a positive NPV. You'll also see that in the first year, they'll be in the negative because they have to develop the product but not commercialize it until uh, they e reach the end of year one. Um, and also you see that in the best case and the base case, they'll break even in about uh, 28 months, while in the worst case, they'll break even in about five years. And uh, to sum it up, they, uh, this means that they can contribute about 21.6 million US dollars to their current market capitalization. And uh, now Jacob will wrap up. So for the last 20 minutes, we have presented to you where is, uh, what is our strategy for, uh, for Nano Dimension. And what we saw was that it's very much relates to from uh, Nano Dimension now, where is it that we want to go in terms of where do we want to play and how do we actually want to do it. And what we have seen in this is that we have presented a three-pronged strategy where first of all, we want you to focus on your ink. This is where you are extremely good. This is where you have your chemical engineering efforts. Secondly, we want you to take you into the 3D printing prototyping market for solar cells, and we want you to partner up with Israeli startup company Ultralight to make this possible. However, this is not enough because we also need to commercialize this strategy. And to do this, we want Nano Dimension to engage with leading distributors uh, such as EOS and Wilet. 
uh, on a global scale. We see that this will be uh, able to generate 12.8 million USD uh, in revenue and uh, over a three-year period. So this is our strategy for Nano Dimension. We think that the company has huge potential and we hope that this has been uh, interesting for you to listen to. So with that, uh, thank you for your attention and we are now uh, happy to answer any questions that the judges may have. I would like to use I would like to use the last sentence of your wrap up when you said that in five years the company will have revenue of twelve point eight million and that you call huge potential. I would like to uh, see how the two parts of the sentence work together. Okay, so the, the question is why, why this is huge potential. And um, so what, what I have to say first is that the first year up until the five years, that, that's a period where you just develop the, the, the product. And uh, after that, there's, there's a period where you build up uh, demand and sort of get the industry used to using this product. Um, and th this also means that now, now we've shown uh, the year five revenue, we could also have shown the, the year seven revenue, which is about, uh, uh, I believe it's, it's about 30 million uh, US dollars, which is, which is definitely more, and more in the likes of uh, what you see that the PCB market will, will bring nano dimensions in, in about four or five years' time. Um, and addition to that, you can also say that this is one application area uh, of, of what the company can do, but it can also be used in a wide variety of other, other industries uh, and, and markets and products. And so if you bring that into account also, you could definitely say that the company has a, a very huge potential. Other questions? Please. <laughs> All right. You talked about the, uh, the, the potential um, uh, in solar um, as well as the use of uh, sil the silver-based expertise. So what are the alternative materials that are there? Is there risks of a killer app or alternative material that's just going to kill that opportunity? So I think uh, it's important here, uh, now I'm not a chemist, but what I do know is that electric electricity flows well through other materials. And um, we looked at other materials that are up and coming and other materials also that nan Nano Dimension is uh, looking into. So Nano Dimension is looking into copper and nickel, uh, which are cheaper materials used for, used for mass production, which, um, sorry, uh, as cheaper materials which are used for mass production. And Nano Dimension is continuously at the forefront in terms of innovating on the material or the, uh, the, the nano metals that they're putting into the ink. So yes, there are some other up and coming uh, materials and uh, they, can, they can, of course, uh, disrupt the ink market. But since uh, Nano Dimension is already the disruptor and the forefront on this material production, uh, we, don't, uh, we cannot really uh, speculate on what other materials that are out there. These are just some of the uh, uh, silver and copper uh, particles that are used, and they can all be used in the, in the photovoltaic cells, which is the so solar panel market. Any other questions? Please, Luria. Um, could you maybe elaborate a little bit on the potential downsides or risks of um, building your expansion, your market development strategy on an Israeli startup company um, and see whether this would be a potentially dangerous choice to make? Um, yes, yeah, so I think it's a, it's a valid point, right? Um, we, we could have maybe chosen this large, large uh, distributor, um, but that's especially why we want to not partner up, but we have clearly identified uh, who the two distributors are. And 
because our partnership is with an Australian startup, I think that's very important because the partnership that needs to function, that's on the technological basis, right? So here, it, it's important that it's an Israeli startup. But for the dis distributors, um, I think it's very important that, that we use uh, the ones, as uh, Alexander mentioned, who are present in the, in the largest uh, solar cell markets. So uh, was that an answer to your question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, you talked about financing this by raising debt. Um, so far, there's not that ma much revenue, uh, so why would a bank give you a loan? For this? So, to, to, to my knowledge at least, uh, when, when a bank gives you a loan, they're looking for future revenue and um, if, if, if our financial forecast, it really holds, then there will be plenty of money to, to pay back, uh, even with a significant interest. Um, and, and, and consequently, you could say that that, that is feasible. Um, also, it is, it is stated in the report by, by Edison that if the company makes a, a new venture, it should borrow uh, cash from, from a bank. Um, and so, so, so they sort of believe that it, that it is uh, a way to do it. Uh, they even say that they can borrow even more than that. Uh, and in addition to that, the company has a very low debt uh, starting already now. So, so, so that way, I believe it is it, it is it is quite feasible. Um, is, that, is that an answer enough? <laughs> okay. So, thank you, Copenhagen Business School team.